What up guys, Excoundrel here, welcome to the channel. Before we dive into the Dark Stars gameplay, I do want to quickly go through building the Dark Stars composition um, and kind of what you should aim to do in terms of carries and what you should aim to do in terms of building this composition in general. So I thought I'd preface some of my videos with the build guide because it might help you out a little bit more. Um, I didn't have time to do the full graphic for this, but I will do. Um, so I'm going to do a very basic build guide and I'm going to do another full Dark Star build guide with the graphics and everything that you can save to your phone later on this week so i'm just going to go try and build the composition out here um i'm going to talk about what you're looking for uh with with uh vanguards so basically with dark stars i like to go mordekaiser early on and then i like to basically have another vanguard now i'll tell you that it's actually really good to have jace the reason it's really good to have jace is he can carry some items that you would then put on lux later on or carry some items that you'd put on Shaco or even Jin, and the two vanguards with with Jace is just super strong. If you can get him two star, it's worth the investment. He's insanely strong in the early game. So then I'm obviously just looking for three dark stars. The the primary um, three that I'm looking for in the early game uh, are going to be something like these three, th these two here, and then Shaco. So then Shaco comes in. You want him at least two star. Two star Shaco is really important. It makes him very strong. Now there are uh, when you are also at this level, level four, level five. There are two other ways that you can play. Um, for instance, I would recommend either running with Jace plus another space pirate like Darius, wherever my boy Darius is. So you can have Darius in there as well. Um, I would definitely recommend that because then you've got two space pirates and three dark stars, which is super strong. The other way that you can play this is with a Kazix. Um, getting him to two star uh, pretty good early game because he's very good at dealing damage to isolated units so that was the way I played the early game um, let's talk about what you do when you get towards your full composition because you're looking for six dark stars obviously so your six dark stars will end up looking something like this so you're going to have you're going to have Mordekaiser and you're going to have Jarvan you're then going to have Lux somewhere up here because the reason that you put Lux here is for two reasons. A, she's going to get a really good binding off being on the on the right or the left hand side so she can be here or here and and B, you want you want her to die. You actually want Lux to die because then she gives the Dark Star buff to the other Dark Star units. That's one of the the funny things about Dark Star is you you're actually always looking for them to actually die because it's important. Um, then you're going to want Jin, of course, and Jin being two star really helps. And then you're obviously going to want Karma. Um, and then when you get to a further level, you're going to want to add in the Ash. Um, the reason you add in Ash is for the sniper bonus for Jin, but also Ash is just a great utility unit. She's got really good CC. I love her. She's such an awesome unit. Um, and then you have options when you get to level eight. Either you can add more Dark Stars because it doesn't actually matter. You, I mean, I could just add another Mordekaiser, for instance. Like, and if he dies, then he still gives another buff to everybody. So it's perfectly fine. But what I ended up doing was adding in a two star Lulu, um, who is super strong. Two star Lulu can go somewhere here. Um, so I've even seen people put her on the front line, for instance, but I like to put her a little bit behind. Um, and that gives you the mystic bonus with the karma. So it gives you a bit of magic resistance to the entire team. And then in this particular game, I actually found a two star Zerath. Now, when Zerath was one star, I put him on the front line. The reason being is one star Zerath is not that valuable to me. Um, and I'd rather he just buff my Jin and my Shaco. When Zerath was two star, I actually put him on the back line and treated him as a carry. Now, in terms of items, I like to play Shaco carry primarily. The perfect items. In fact, I'm going to talk about the items that I think are the most important. Bloodthirster and GA are, in my eyes, the most important. You don't actually need that much more damage um, because you're Dark Star. So Bloodthirster and GA are really important on Shaco and then Infinity Edge, for instance. So I think this is like a, a, the perfect item combo for Shaco, but Bloodthirster and GA are more important than Infinity Edge, in my opinion. If there, is item, if there is an item that I think that you really need to massively boost the DPS output of this particular composition, it's Runins for Jin. I really think that you lack AoE damage in this composition if you do not have Runins on Jin. And I have struggled in certain comps without Runins. Um, I also then I'd like to add a Trap Claw to Jin. The reason I like to add a Trap Claw is then I can I can actually use Jin to either if if the Blitzcrank's got a Zephyr. He can he will Zephyr the Karma and pull the pull the Blitz uh, pull the Jin and, and get stunned, or if they just have a Blitzcrank, I can use him to to bait the Blitzcrank hook in the corners. Um, other items that I think work well, Morellonomicon is awesome on Lux. Would thoroughly recommend it. And actually, Zerath can have a, a multitude of items, but in this game, I actually gave him Gwinsu's. I genuinely think Gwinsu's could be a solid item for Zerath. So, um, this was the composition. Let's dive into the actual game. All right, guys. So 
Let's talk about the game where I played Dark Stars. I ended up picking up a needlessly large rod from the uh, carousel. Now, I actually think needlessly, needlessly large rod is probably one of the worst items that you can get from the carousel, mainly because it doesn't really build into much that is particularly good right now. Um, the only thing that I really like, the only two items I think are really good that you could build are Rabadons and Morellos, but they are quite comp specific. And then obviously Gwinsus, which is good for things like uh, Kale builds. But there are much better items that you can actually get from the carousel that uh, needs needlessly just isn't that good. So, looking at the early game here, I picked up a pair of Jarvans, and I actually found a Jace from the first round. Now, I actually keep this said Jace, because Jace with another Vanguard, um, if I give him a couple of items, you can see here I ended up giving him a... Um, a needlessly large rod. I gave him the, the rod because it just increases the power of his uh, ability by a significant amount. There is another thing that I could have done here. I could have just added the uh, BF sword onto to make a Hextech Gunblade, but Hextech Gunblade is not a particularly strong item. It's only good on Jace, and it, it can be passable for Shaco, but I, I genuinely just think there are better items. So I decided in general just to go for the Morella Nomicon. I think the Morella Nomicon is probably the best item that I can get on Jace here, and it's going to increase his power significantly, especially because he can hit multiple people with his ability. Uh, and you can see here that I've beat the early cybernetics player. Probably I uh, would have beaten him without the Morella Nomicon, but with the Mor Morella Nomicon, it got actually a lot easier to do so. Um, you can see I'm picking up the poppies because, again, I, I like that idea of going for a Vanguard start whenever I'm playing Dark Star. I think Vanguard is a very, very strong early synergy, mainly because most people are just basic attack focused and not uh, that much damage comes from abilities and you don't have many big hitting abilities either. Um, and I also ran with the Space Pirates. You remember me talking about the Space Pirate here? Just going with the Space Pirate because it basically allows me to get a bit of extra gold and helps me fill a couple of holes that I wouldn't be able to have otherwise. Um, and you can see now also I find the um, I find the Darius, which I think is slightly better than the One Star Graves, and then I also sell off my units to get to nine gold. The reason I go to nine gold here is because I don't want to one hundred percent commit to a Vanguard or Dark Star build because you can see on my bench that I have got a Rakan and a Zin. That is because, as you see, I have built the Morella Nomicon. The um, the, the Rakan will use Morello Nomicon really easily. So Morello is a good item for Rakan. Um, and so therefore I'm keeping the Rakan and Zin just in case I decide to go for protectors. In terms of items that I'm looking for on the current carousel, there are a few that I can go for. Um, I genuinely think going for the, the Negatron Cloak here is the most important one for me because it allows me to go to Bloodthirsty if I wanted to go for Shaco. But also, if I were to go to Protectors, it's half of a, or even like a go for a, uh, a complete um, Dragon's Claw. So I've, that was just, the, in my eyes, the best item for the, the way that my builds could go from this point in time. That's why I decided... Um, to go for the Negatron Cloak, because it could go for a Bloodthirster or a Dragon's Claw, depending on what I uh, what I needed. Now, there is a Maud in the shop. I can't remember if I ended up buying this Mordekaiser, or I waited a little bit longer to buy the Mordekaiser. Um, I think it really depends on how much gold I ended up getting from this particular round here. As you can see, I actually got 20 gold in total. Yeah, I, I actually didn't buy the Mordekaiser this round. I think I was um, less willing to commit to a, um, a, a Dark Star build, and was more looking down the Protector build, build path, because I had that Dragon's Claw. But I, again, again, I still very easily. I don't need a three star mod in this comp. The, the, the beautiful thing about um, the, the beautiful thing about dark stars is to win. You don't actually need any three stars. Uh, that's one of the things that makes this dark star composition really good um, because three stars are obviously harder to come by. Um, they're a bit more difficult to. Um, uh, they're a bit more difficult in general to to. to um, to, f to find especially when people are competing whereas with this build like if someone's competing for your build it's perfectly okay because you just need those two stars the only thing that you might struggle with is getting a two star gin which is which is actually pretty important for your success i'm just having a look here i'm hoping that i buy the mordekaiser this time around again i was more thinking about um oh there's the mordekaiser yeah so i get a two star mordekaiser and i'm just like yeah yeah, okay, maybe I play Dark Stars. So actually, we've got to thank the two-star Mordekaiser for me selling off the Protectors, because I thought at this point, actually, we could play uh, we could play Dark Stars. Um, now, Mordekaiser just gets sold in... Uh, sorry, Poppy, Poppy just gets sold in favor of Mordekaiser here. Um, we are obviously keeping the... Um, trying to keep this um, as, as, as kind of 
economically viable as possible. So that's why I'm not actually leveling up early. I'm trying to keep the 50 gold. And I end up losing, which means I lose a win streak here. It was only a three win streak, so it's not that bad. Um, but I'm at 50 gold with a very healthy amount of HP. Like, this is actually a really, really awesome position to be in. Uh, I level up a little bit further here. I still have the Space Pirate, so if I just get one kill with the Space Pirate, then I think we're in, we're in a solid spot. And you can see that I actually combined the Bloodthirster and the Darius, because I think it is the, one of the more important items that you can get for Shaco. So I decided to go for the Bloodthirster. So I, I just need to get one kill here, and I end up like with a Space Pirate, and I can actually end up getting a gold. And I get that one gold, which means I can stay at 50 gold despite losing this round, which is perfectly fine. And we find the Shaco, and we've also got the Ash here as well. Um, Ash is really nice because she provides a bit of CC, and obviously when I find Jin, she's going to be able to combine together. Um, I actually add the Graves back just to, get, just to get the Space Pirate bonus back, even though I don't think uh, I have got a particularly strong set of Space Pirates at this point in time, but if my Jace can get one kill with his ability, then, you know, we're in a fine spot. But he didn't. We lost really hard. So at this point, we're starting to transition. Now, I think one of the most important things here, if I was able to get that Jin, I would have taken him. Um, my second choice is obviously the BF Sword with the Cho'Gath. That would allow me to then either go to Infinity Edge or GA. Now, I could straight up just build an Infinity Edge on my Shaco. The ideal scenario for me would be to wait until the next neutral round and wait to see if I can find a GA. But if I can't find a GA, I think it's okay to just go for the Infinity Edge. Um, Two-star Shaco is really important um, because it essentially allows you to carry the mid-game really easily. I find a Karma here as well, which is super nice because the, the, the Karma is going to help uh, buff my Shaco in the mid-game. But you're going to watch the Shaco even with just the Bloodthirster. Um, and we've got five Dark Stars. So we're, just, we're, we're, we're solely just looking for... I know we've got four Dark Stars. We're looking for Lux and we're looking for um, Jin at this point in time. The reason we want to go to level six is because it gives us a greater chance of finding Jin. 10% um, chance of finding a Jin. We want to get there before some of the other Dark Star players. Um, as you can see, I've got a Lux here, which she's really strong with Morello Nomicon. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have to sell the Jace, uh, but he's two-star right now. He's going to help preserve a lot of HP in this mid-game. Um, but yeah, we're just mostly looking to go to level seven as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, I think we're, we're basically just uh, leveling up slowly to level 7, and once we're at level 7, that's where I'm going to roll. So once we're at level 7, we're going to be doing a bit of rolling. The reason we're going to roll at level 7 specifically is because, um, uh, is because it's a greater chance of finding Jin, but also we still have a good chance of finding the Shaco, so it's 40% of finding the, the 3 costs that we need. That also includes the Ash, the Karma, the Lux, all of those who we need to get to 2-star. We can get to 2-star at level 7, most importantly. So you can see here, I'm now getting quite a lot of units that are, are relevant for the composition. We're finding uh, potential three stars on uh, people like um, Jarvan. We're going to sell the Jace now that we've found the the Jin, which is amazing. And we now have the ability to just add a load of random things to my to my units. Now, obviously, I've got the Negatron Cloak, which would eventually allow me to build um, the... Which should eventually allow me to build the uh, Runin's Hurricane on the Jin. Runin's Hurricane is really important on Jin. It massively boosts his DPS output. But the other important thing about Jin is that you're going to want to be looking to, to find... Um, you're going to be wanting to look to find a two-star Jin as quickly as possible. Now, there is one other player in this lobby contesting me for Dark Stars, and I believe he rolled down. So that's why I'm being a bit more uh, aggressive with my rolling strategy here at level 7. This is basically called a level 7 all-in, um, and I think Dark Stars is one of the compositions that really suits a level 7 all-in. What you're looking to do at this level is you're not looking to, to like roll your entire gold away, but you're looking to roll as much as possible to find the core three, uh, the core two stars that you need for your comp. So for me, the core two stars that I needed were um, Jin and Shaco. So I'm looking to find another Jin, and I'm looking to find... Uh, I've obviously now got the Shaco, but obviously I want to also upgrade my Karma. Because once my Karma's upgraded, that's practically every two-star that I need. Um, but you can see that I'm struggling with AoE damage without having a two-star... A Jin with Hurricane, so uh, obviously Jin with Hurricane would be, would be preferable. Now, if I wanted to play Mordekaiser, I could play Mordekaiser carry and go for the three-star, but again, there are people contesting Mordekaiser, so it's going to be less likely that I can do that. Um... 
I go for the Soraka with the recurve bow here. The the reason being is that obviously it gives me the Runan's Hurricane, which is a really big uh, power spike on Jin. And if I can get him to two star, it's going to massively boost his DPS output. The other beneficial thing that I've got going for me is then I have the option for another Bloodthirster on Shaku. If I wanted a double Bloodthirster here, I could definitely double Bloodthirster. Um, it would give him an obscene amount of life steal, but I have that option for the double Bloodthirster Shaku. I would prefer to wait to see if I get a chain vest. So I'm going to hold that that particular. Um, BF sword and wait to see if I get a chain vest. Uh, I think Shaku's carrying me here. Yeah, Shaku, Shaku, no, Shaku doesn't carry me. I lied. We're not strong enough at this point in time. We really do need the Jin too. Um, and again, because I've got the Lulus, my ultimate goal at this point in time, because we've got the Lulus, is to go to level 8 and add Lulu. That would be adding the Mystic bonus, and Lulu is a really good CC unit. So we are aiming to go to level 8, which is why we are, we are sort of saving our economy to get back up. Now, if I was more sensible, what I would actually have done here was sell the Mordekaisers and the the, uh, the Jarvan, because realistically, it doesn't actually matter that you get them to two star if you're not playing them as so sort of three star if you're not playing them as carries. Um, the reason being is you kind of want them to die. You actually do kind of want your uh, your frontline to die because they just give dark star bonuses to everybody. So so realistically, it's perfectly fine to just straight up sell. Um, your your Mordekaisers and your your Jarvans once you've gotten to two star because they like realistically they're not actually going to do much even at three star with no items they're not really going to be carrying your game if there is if there is one unit that you want to three star in this comp that one unit is going to be Shaco um, so now that we we have got past the point where there are uh, literally no more uh, rounds where we can get um, components I've just gone for the double bloodthirster on Shaco and I'm going to add the needlessly over to the Lux I've made a trap claw for Jin so I can bait corners with him more effectively um, I'm one of the reason I'm doing what I'm doing here in terms of his positioning is that I would like my Jin to oh this guy actually just destroyed me um, there is a bug as well by the way when someone drops into GA sometimes Shaco won't or, or units won't change target that's kind of what I got burnt by there but we are just looking to level up we're looking to like spam levels at this point in time we level to level eight and once we level to level eight we're actually going to roll down um i find a zerath by the way and i'm thinking actually i could play zerath on the front line instead of lulu and just go for an extra dark star this basically makes it makes it a seven dark star composition um which is actually good because even when Zerath dies, he actually buffs the rest of the team. And you can just see how powerful I got just from that little roll down there. Um, and now the goal is to, to eco back up and go for level 9. Because going for level 9 is going to allow me to add the Lulu. And if I can get level 9, it's much more likely that I'm going to find 2-star Lulu and 2-star Zerath, which would make my composition much, much stronger. Because I can't actually get much stronger right now other than getting extremely lucky and finding Shakos over and over again. Because I've got the two-star Jin. This is about as, as strong as my comp is going to get for the foreseeable future. And that is perfectly okay. Like, we are actually super strong right now. And you can see how much imp impact the Jin is having with the uh, the Rune and Hurricane. So my main goal now is there is no way that we're going to get three-star um, Java. And there's probably no way we're getting three-star Mordekaiser. And there is no way that we're going to get three-star Shaco. So our, our ultimate goal at this point in time is to go for the uh, the level 9 and add in a 2-star Zareth and 2-star Lulu. Go for the Hand of Justice here. Now, I'm holding the Hand of Justice for a reason. Um, th there might be an item on the next uh, neutral round that is going to be better for Jin than a Hand of Justice. Now, I think Hand of Justice is, a, is an okay item for Jin. Don't get me, like, I just want to let you guys know that. I think Hand of Justice is a fine item for Jin. But the reason I'm holding out is because obviously in two rounds time, there is going to be another neutral round where we are potentially going to find a slightly better item. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So we actually end up losing here by one to an Aurelia who's got some pretty strong items. Um, this guy is actually, I actually played this game with two of my friends uh, who are both in Diamond. And uh, and that guy that I just lost to was one of my friends, actually from the Vainglory days. If anyone here still watches from Vainglory, one of them was called Boff and one of them was called Binny. They were both uh, both really, really good European Vainglory players. Really like playing with them. Um, so yeah, they actually now play TFT as well, and they both made it to Diamonds, so uh, we were playing together. But I also want to show you how powerful this composition is versus, like, this is a fully stacked Bang Bros composition. Like, absolutely fully stacked Bang Bros composition, and we just monstered it with this gin as well. Um, this gin with, with, with Runans really boosts the power um, output of this composition as a whole. Um, and yes, we find the Zephyr, and we're like, Zephyr's not as good on Jin as uh, a Hand of Justice. And actually, the Zephyr is a really good item to give to the Ash, because you can use the Ash to position bait with the Zephyr, um, which I think is awesome. So now we, we are essentially like able to go to level 9 after this. So we're basically able to sell everything and go to level 9. Um, I'm going to give the Zephyr over to the Ash. 
Uh, and I eventually just sell the Javan because there's no way that Javan's ever going to get there. And we now sit at level 9. And every round, we're basically going to roll looking for a uh, 2-star Lulu and a 2-star Zerath. That's basically the end goal now. We just want a 2-star Lulu and a 2-star Zerath. There's no other way that we really need to play this game. Uh, we are super strong right now. Um, and as you can see, uh, we beat the other Dark Star player. He's gone. Uh, wave, wave him goodbye. Uh, and now every round, there's not much point like saving too much economy. We might as well just try and roll and I find a Zerath and then roll and find a Zerath and a Lulu, which is just super good. Like we are about to we are about to hit the roof in terms of power on the next level or on the next round, but we're already pretty strong. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to position to, to play against the uh, this guy, the uh, Binny, the protectors. Um, and we don't quite hit the right target. We were, I think I was trying to get the uh, the Rakan. But nevertheless, um, Dark Star is just insanely good versus Protectors because Protectors are not good versus burst damage. And uh, on, and honest, and to be honest with you, um, all of Dark Stars is just burst damage. So you're actually really good versus Protectors. And this is our final comp. Now, there's a reason I moved Zerath to the back. Um, the reason I moved Zerath to the back is because he's actually a strong unit, um, and at two star. He is going to be a pretty strong Dark Star carry for me. I mean, if you just look at him, he's starting to do serious work. And we actually beat the, uh, the the Brawler Blaster player. And then itemization, the final item that I can choose, I just go for the Gwinsus. The Gwinsus on the Zerath. He benefits from attack speed and AP. It seems like a really good item for him. So I just decided to go Gwinsus Zerath. And now the entire game is going to be about me trying to um, position my Ash so I catch the Misfortune in the Zephyr. Um, and also then trying to get my um, trying to get my gin to bait the blitzcrank, which is what I was doing here. So I actually get my gin to bait the bait the blitzcrank, although rather actually the Zeref hits the blitzcrank, and then I bait him afterwards. So the, the blitzcrank didn't really do anything that round, and we ended up uh, we ended up winning. But it's all about trying to catch the misfortune. Now I can't. Um, I don't think I can go for. Actually, I could go for the Jinx because she's only got Trap Claw. This is a mistake that I always make, by the way, guys. I always think, oh, the Trap Claw. I can't Zephyr them. But I think I Zephyring Misfortune is probably better because she takes a little time. Takes a little while to get going. Uh, and I swapped at the last moment, and I did hit the Misfortune in the Zephyr, which made my composition much much stronger. Um, and you can see here we ended up getting the win, and we beat him, and we came first. Dark Star is OP. There we go. Oh, and I uh, hope you enjoyed, and don't forget to like and subscribe.